Hello everyone, it is time for all four of our quarter-finals here in the men's Bloodsport division. Butterbean, Matt Riddle, Tommaso Ciampa, Manuro Suzuki, Bobby Lashley, Mike Tyson, and your main event of Walter versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. And here we go in the first quarter final was underway. We've got Butterbean versus Riddle. Let's have a quick gander how these two have managed to get here. Um, so Butterbean has defeated Vader, Pete Dunn, and Mark Mero to get to this point. Whereas Matt Riddle has taken out Oni Lorcan, Samoa Joe, and Kurt Angle. So it really is an impressive, um, an impressive group of people that both of these have beaten, to be honest. And it'll be interesting to see which one of the two will go on to the semi-finals where they'll face the winner of Tommaso Ciampa and Minoru Suzuki. Oh, what a knee in the face there by Riddle. Brings Butterbean back up to a standing base. Now Riddle sends him over the top and in with a big knee into the face. Riddle now, big knee strike into the face once again. There's the clothesline. Continues on with more, and the big Pele kick, and all of a sudden Riddle is on one here tonight, isn't he? Got those strikes in the face, and now in with a submission here by Riddle. Will this be enough? It'd be a pretty early win. No, it's not. Butterbean able to break free. And now Riddle dropping the knee on the inside of the knee of Butterbean. That's smart. Butterbean is not a light man at all. So to um, to put the damage... Oh, Riddle, don't do it again. Don't do it again, Riddle. Come on, you did this in the last one. Oh my god, Riddle's done it again. How, Riddle? How? This must be quite a common glitch, you know, because we've had it twice now. Right, let's restart that one. We've had this glitch twice now. Was it Riddle as well last? I think it was Riddle last time, wasn't it? Or was it Kurt Angle in the match against Riddle? Riddle kicks things off well. And now Riddle in with that st oh, Indian Deathlock star manoeuvre. Both guys slowly back up to their feet and Butterbean taking Riddle up into the Alabama slam. And now Butterbean wrenching away, pulling the ankle back. And now Butterbean dropping his body weight across the, uh, the legs there of Riddle. Very painful looking maneuver. Butterbean now taking Riddle up, and there is a gut buster. A couple of gut busters. Butterbean now in with a. again. Backbreakers, gut busters, a little bit of everything there. Continues on with the strikes, and now Butterbean really in full control of this one. There's a sidewalk slam. I wonder if that glitch would happen, right? Whether you would win because um, you've technically escaped. You wouldn't, obviously, in us because we've um, changed the rules in us. So you can't win by escaping these cage matches. But I wonder if um, if that glitch did happen in a standard cage match, whether that would class as an escape the cage victory. Riddle now with the slaps and the chops. And a big boot right into the side of their head. 
And now Riddle locking in the triangle chokehold. Both guys back up to their feet, but Butterbean was a little bit quicker, but Riddle was able to reverse that. And that's going to be the thing, like I said in the past, Butterbean is a boxer. That's what he's best at. He's tried to adapt himself as, as much as possible here. But it is a lot easier for someone like Riddle to do that because he has done MMA. He's been doing wrestling for a while as well. He is uh, a lot more um, adept at changing his style for what we're doing here. Big boot right on the side of their head. And now Riddle mounting... Butterbean then rolls him up into that submission once again. Will this be enough to make Butterbean tap out? He's been unbeatable so far, Butterbean, in this tournament, hasn't he, really? All right, Butterbean was able to break free both guys up to their feet. Riddle, stop going on the top. You know you only break things. But to be now all oh, in with a backbreaker and again another backbreaker and then just launching Riddle across the ring. And now look at the strength of Butterbean taking Riddle up into that big front flapped face powerbomb. And then in with that bitter end as well. It's not a bitter end, it's a flatliner. Flatliner. Butterbean wrenching back of the neck. Riddle is busted open here. Pretty badly as well. Nice reverse DDT. Butterbean now standing up and has Riddle, no Riddle fighting back with a forearm and a big knee into the face Springboard looking for that boot in the head but completely missed Butterbean now taking Riddle up it's been an interesting match this one I, I, I keep feeling like, I don't know it really could go either way. At one point, somebody's doing well, and then 30 seconds later, the match is completely turned on its head, so it really could go either way at this point. Dragon screw there by Riddle, and I think that's what he's got to do. If he can keep the big man down, I think if it goes down to a, a sort of grappling match, it's all going to be Riddle's, surely. Riddle now on the back, and there's a the submission once again, hooked in. But you see the big issue there, Riddle can't get his hands clasped around the neck of Butterbean. But it's enough still. Butterbean taps and Matt Riddle moves on to the semi-finals of the Blood Sport Tournament. Right, there we go. Riddle, well done. Riddle. Matt Riddle moves up to plus two in the rankings after all of that. And Butterbean is going to move down to plus two in the rankings. So a riddle, big victory for him. He will face the winner of our match coming up next, Tommaso Ciampa and Manuro Suzuki in tomorrow's Bloodsport semi-finals. And here we go then with our second semi-final, Champa versus Suzuki. Uh, of course, the winner of this one we already know now will face off against Matt Riddle in the first of our semi-finals. So one of these two or Matt Riddle will be in the final to fight for the Blood Sport Championship and to be crowned the first ever Blood Sport um, tournament winner as well. All right, good old Elgato crashed again. We're back in action. So what was I saying? Yeah, the winner of this one will face off against um, Riddle in the semi-final. So one of these two guys or Riddle will be in the final of this competition. Yeah, we say we'll make this into a annual competition. 
We might not do it as large scale as we have this time. Of course, we uh, we had a lot of people involved this time around. We, we might do. I'll have to see how it goes in the future as all. Well. Suzuki able to break free from the suplex by dropping Champa in with a DDT. Look at that Champa with the... We're getting a boot in the back. And in with a neck breaker. I mean, this match so far is going pretty interestingly. Again, I mean, I suppose we're just at that point now. It could go either way in every single match, couldn't it, really? Suzuki now wrenching back at the hand of Champa. Drops him down with a knee in the arm. Now trying to rake away at the face and the eyes of Champa, who fights Suzuki back with the strike in the face and Suzuki gets one back with the elbow in the face of Champa now as well Suzuki with Champa up on the shoulder drops him neck first across that top rope and dropping the big knee into the arm as well nice gotch style pile drive we know that's one that Suzuki likes to use as a finisher maybe looking for that sleeper Oh, what is wrong with that car? I know what's wrong with that car. It sounds like the fan belt's going. Can you hear that in the background? It's like a real squeaking noise. The car just gone past the front of my house. Suzuki now sending Champa off the ropes, looking for that low strike, but Champa was able to avoid it. And Suzuki now... I thought he might have been looking for that um, sleeper, but no, just pulling back. It's like a really lazy camel clutch, this one. Champa able to break free. Like I said, it was a very lazy maneuver, so I'm not surprised Champa was able to break free. Now Champa taking Suzuki up. In with that project, Champa the powerbomb onto the knees. And now he likes to use that underhook face plant. Which he uses and Champa gets the win. Suzuki is eliminated. Tommaso Champa moves on to the semi finals to face off against Riddle. Champa or Riddle? Okay. Uh, Chi Ampa. Um, who before this tournament was having a terrible time in our ranking system now moves up to a plus two. Uh, whereas Riddle was on plus two, is now going to move down to a plus one. So there we go. Great win for Champa. Well done. And let's move on to the other side of the tournament and see who'll be the first man into our semi-finals. That's the words I'm looking for. My brain stopped working now. And here we go then with our first quarterfinal on the right-hand side of the brackets. We've got Bobby Lashley who's defeated Masahiro Chono, Alberto Del Rio and Conor McGregor to get here. Where Mike Tyson has defeated Floyd Mayweather, Eric um, of the Viking Raiders as well as Antonio Inoki. So let's see if uh, either of these two can continue this on. Of course, the winner of this one will face off against the winner of our final match tonight between Stone Cold Steve Austin and Walter. It does seem, I mean, just looking at it, I mean, I know we've had a lot of big names from outside of the world of wrestling, but as we've gone through this tournament, they have all sort of dropped away, and we are now, basically, apart from Mike Tyson, we are now fully on wrestlers. And like I said... I'm not saying they're better, but they're just a lot more suited to this style. I mean, Mike Tyson could get a knockout at any point in time. We know that. With his big chunky gold rings. But that's all he's got into his game, whereas Lashley has the wrestling maneuvers. He has the MMA maneuvers. Has the potential submission maneuvers. So, yeah, I just think there's more... 
There's more strings to Lashley's bow, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the one string in Tyson's bow is going to leave him short here, I suppose. As Lashley with the big back elbows on Tyson. Now Lashley up on the top. No, decides against it. Lashley now dropping a big boot right into the back of Tyson's leg. Big strikes again by Tyson. Has uh, Lashley grounded? This is a dangerous time in this match for Lashley. If he gets grounded and just struck by Tyson, that could be game, set, match. Tyson now locking in a submission of his own. Big elbows into the face by Lashley. Both guys back up on their feet and it's Lashley with the strike and then the big spear in control. And now look at him raining down those strikes and all oh, Tyson busted open. And this is probably the, uh, the worst position we've seen Tyson in so far. As Tyson is back up and he's, oh my God, where did Tyson get that kick from? Oh, what a slap by Lashley. But Tyson now with a big knee in the face of Lashley. They say Tyson's got a lot to stand up for now. He's the only non-wrestler left in this tournament. Can he make it through to the next round? Tyson now with Lashley up on the shoulders. Oh, there's a big strike and that's it. No, it's not. I think the ref considered calling it there, but it's not to be the case. Tyson now with a spear. Lashley goes straight back up. And Lashley ooh, dropping Tyson down, flatliner style. There's the full Nelson locked in. Oh my god, looks just swinging Tyson around. Is the ref going to stop it? Is Tyson going to tap? Lashley just launches Tyson to one side. Oh, look at that right hand right in the gut. Another one as well. And I don't really think that Lashley wants to get into a striking battle here with Tyson. It might not be the wisest thing he's ever done. It's working for him so far, though, I must admit. Lashley now with Tyson up and dropping his body weight across the arm. Big strike into the face. And Lashley once again locking in the full Nelson and instantly Mike Tyson gives up and Lashley moves through. And that is the last non-wrestler eliminated from the tournament and Bobby Lashley moves in to the semi-finals. Lashley, Bobby Lashley moves up to plus one. He's been uh, doing well from this tournament as well. He was in the minuses until this tournament came along and now he's elevated himself up. Uh, and we're going to go with Iron Mike Tyson. Let's get the right one. T-Bone, Kid, Mike Tyson. There we go. He's going to move from plus three down to a plus two. All right, there we go. Let's move on to our main event and our final quarter final. And here we go in the final quarter final is upon us. Hang on a minute. Whoa, 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 I just realized something. How am I Walter? Why am I Walter? Okay. Let's restart that one. For some reason I was controlling Walter. I don't know why. I'm controlling Walter again, aren't I? Okay, nope. Not Austin. Right in the middle, okay. Okay, that's fine. A nippy start, but we're, we're up and running now. Right, so to get here, Walter has defeated Commander Aziz. He's defeated Taz and Goldberg. Whereas Stone Cold Steve Austin's got past Ilja Dragunov, Eddie Kingston and Katsuri Shibata. 
And now one of these two men will be moving on to face off against Bobby Lashley for that place in the final of this tournament and the opportunity to be crowned the first SWE Bloodsport champion. So, of course, tomorrow's episodes, like I said, two more tomorrow. We'll be starting off earlier in the day with the semi-finals, two semi-finals from the men's division. Like I said, Riddle versus Champa and Lashley versus the winner of this one. And two semi-finals from the women's division with Masha Slamovic versus Thunder Rosa and Eva Lise versus Asuka. Before finishing things off in the evening with the main event, the championship match. And also on that card, we've got two fatal four-way eliminations, one from the men's division and one from the women's division. And just to try and help some people out because there are some low rankings. It's Austin in control at this point in time, but Walter tripping Austin over. And Walter dropping his body weight across the chest of Austin, looking for the knees into the chest again, but not to be the case, Austin managed to move out of the way. Uh, both these guys doing okay in the rankings now. I mean, Walter was always doing pretty well, but he had a rough year. Um, 2021 was a great year for Walter. 2022 so far, uh, he had struggled somewhat. He was in the minuses, but he's definitely turned it around with this tournament. Austin, um, he was sort of in the doldrums, wasn't really doing much at all. Um, I don't think he really had as many opportunities as we probably should have given him. Uh, but he is now leveled up and he's... He, what? Really? Wow, the referee stops the match. For me, that was a little bit early, but the referee has stopped it and Austin is through. Wow, okay. I was still halfway took it from my intro. It's Bobby Lashley versus Stone Cold Steve Austin then. Wow, okay, that was really out of nowhere. I was not expecting that to finish so quick at all, but there we go. So yeah, like I said, we will have those um, those four semi-finals tomorrow and then the finals later on in the day as well. And then into Tuesday, we will be starting things off with our Forbidden Door shows. Some big matches coming up for you in those. And there's going to be some great matches over the entire thing as well. And um, of course, as we've said before, our Forbidden Door pay-per-view is not just AEW versus New Japan. We are pitting all companies against each other. So it should be pretty fun. Anyway, uh, we'll call it there then, I suppose. I'm going to love you and leave you. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one. Of course, if you have, make sure you hit the like and subscribe and all the other good stuff. And I will see you all again next time. Bye-bye.